Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to day three of the Anna Awards. Today we're talking all things powders, which I know might not be the most exciting category for people, but a good powder can really make all the difference in your makeup and how it lasts and how it looks on the skin. And I'm a bit of a powder connoisseur. I've tried quite a few and I have a decent collection. So I've put together a couple of different categories that I want to discuss with nominations and winners. So before we get underway, if you're new here, if this is the first video you've ever come across of mine, or you haven't seen my previous couple of videos this series the honor awards is supporting a charity it's a charity I've worked with in the past it's called hope for the children it's a charity based out of Christchurch New Zealand which is my hometown it helps to financially support families that have children suffering from anxiety helps them to get the counseling they need especially following the earthquakes which happened back in 2010 there's been a huge increase in anxiety in children in Christchurch so much so that now four out of five children growing up in Canterbury are suffering with anxiety which is a huge statistic it means so much for me to be able to give back with the series there are three different ways that you can help to support the charity depending on your financial situation there is something for everyone the first way that you can help is by purchasing merchandise with this beautiful little sunflower design in the introduction video that I've got linked below I do talk a lot about the significance and meaning behind the design because it's very special to me there are heaps of different products mugs cards and clocks scarves cushion covers tote bags literally everything and all of the profits will be going directly to hope for the children Second the way that you can support this charity is by making a PayPal donation via the link below. Every five dollars that you donate gives you an extra entry into the draw to win a makeup prize pack of all of my favorite products valued over five hundred dollars and that prize pack will be announced in the last video of the series so on day 12. And the final way that you can contribute if you've got no money to purchase any merchandise or to donate via PayPal then you can help me by sharing and liking this video or pop a post up on social media or Pinterest Interest because I'm going to be donating all of my AdSense so all the money that I earn through ads that play on these videos I'll be donating that money to hope for the children so the more views these videos get the more money I can donate that way all of us can feel like we're contributing no matter what our financial situation is so thank you for letting me explain that if, again if you want more information it's in the description but without further ado let's move on and talk about my favorite powders the first category I want to talk about are transparent powders so these are those white kind of HD style powders that have absolutely no color to them and they look completely transparent on the skin when blended out I've got three nominations for this category the first one is actually really a new product that I tried recently I didn't go in with any expectations I just expected it to be like an okay powder but it really looked beautiful on the skin it's by the brand as cosmetics and it's their translucent loose setting powder so it's one of those white powders it kind of looks like flour but when you use a very small amount and just pat it into the skin it looks super invisible and it really helped my makeup to stay so I really liked that one the second nomination is by derma blend and this is their loose setting powder again this one looks almost identical to the Azalea one. And this is basically a pure talc powder. The only difference really between these two is that the Azalea one does have a little bit of a scent to it. So if you are sensitive to fragrance, I would recommend the Derma Blend one because it's so simple, the ingredients. It's literally just talc and then it might contain some metal oxides as well. So it's very, very simple. And then the last nomination in this category of best transparent powder is the RCMA no color powder now I remember a few years ago vowing like never to try this because I was just like the packaging is just awful it's like a salt and pepper shaker this is a very similar texture to the other two the only difference is that this is a mixture of talc and silica and it says on it that it won't cause flashback I haven't experienced flashback although to be fair when you've got really fair skin like mine I think it's less noticeable because our whole body's flashback <laughs> I also don't bake with my powders it's just not a technique I do I would say if you're planning to bake I'd probably recommend the derma blend one because that one obviously is only talc it doesn't have silica and silica is an ingredient that will often cause flashback and HD powders I do have to give the RCMA the winning prize for this category because you get so much product in this so you really get bang for your buck if you use a lot of powder this would be the most cost-effective version I think all three perform very well the only downside being the way it's distributed I find it easiest to kind of actually unscrew the cap and pour a little bit into there and use it that way rather than using the weird kind of 
salt shaker. So now we're moving up a sort of coverage level to my best translucent setting powder. Now you might think that translucent and transparent are the same. Transparent literally means see-through. Translucent means to let light through. So they're quite a different sort of formulation to those white powders that I showed. One of them is pressed and two of them are loose. The way I determine the use of a powder is more about how I want it to look on the skin rather than the application method or its delivery. That's why I'm grouping it in this way. So the first First powder I want to talk about best translucent powder is the MAC mineralized skin finish natural and this is in the shade light that I wear as you can see this does have a bit of color to it it doesn't give very much coverage at all it's extremely sheer it certainly won't look quite as invisible on the skin as the transparent white powders but it does a really good job of setting your makeup without looking too flat it does have an ever so slight sheen to it like really subtle so if you do have more oily skin but you don't want to look flat and cakey then I would really recommend this one. It's also great being a pressed formula. You can take it in your bag. It's good for touch-ups. The next nomination for best translucent powder come as no surprise <laughs> it's my models prefer mineral finishing veil so as the name suggests this is kind of meant to be marketed more as like a finishing powder I think it works best just simply as a loose setting powder that has a tiny bit of color to it again the packaging on this one is a bit of a dud that's its major downside when you lift it up you've got a mirror that is absolutely useless as you can see because it gets covered in powder but the actual product is so nice so as you can see it looks quite similar to the mac one when swatched i don't know if you can see it there but it's got just a hair fraction more sheen to it certainly not glittery but you can just see it just looks so sort of healthy and glowy and that's what i love with this it will set your makeup like a just transparent powder but it also offers that tiny tiny bit of color and tiny bit of sheen to the skin and then the last nomination for best translucent powder is a new discovery it's the long comb powder i've tried heaps and heaps of high-end loose powders this year and this was the only one that i really truly loved obviously this is a loose powder and the packaging of this is really nice when you open it up it comes with its own little puff and the quality of this puff is so nice <laughs> and the puff fits perfectly inside there so it's really good for traveling because it means the powder doesn't fly everywhere so you can kind of see there it does look very fair it leaves a very soft sheen on the skin but what i love about this one is it's quite pore reducing this is one that looks really really good like just here it just seems to blur away pores it's quite miraculous especially if you use the press and roll technique it just seems to disguise pores so well however my winner i can't go past the models prefer and the reason this one beats the long com is a the price of this is a lot less in australia it's about two and a half times cheaper and b this one does just look a hair fraction less powdery on the skin the long con one is beautiful and if you're in the us or somewhere away from australia where you can't buy this then the long con one is the one i'd recommend but this is my winner because i just think it looks so beautiful on the skin so now we're moving on to powder foundations and this was a category that i again this year i sort of just was trying to find my favorite powder foundation and i tried about seven or so different ones these are three that i think have really exceptional formulas my first recommendation is an oldie bit of goodie it's the studio fix powder i've had this particular one for a couple of years now it's a really really great product as you can see i've hit pan this color in the pan looks really great it's nw10 i think nc10 is super yellow from memory even though i love the fluid and the concealer and nc10 from mac i just find the powder i remember looking at it in store and it was just super yellow as you can see this gives a very 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 full coverage i don't love using this all all over because as i say it can look a little bit peachy on me but i use it mainly as a touch-up product in my bag so because it has this little area where you can put a sponge this is not one that comes with it but i just put my own in there it's a really handy product for me to keep in my bag so that if i get a breakout because this has so much good coverage i can just like put a tiny bit of powder on that breakout it'll cover it if my foundation rubs off around my nose because i have a cold or hay fever i can touch up a little bit with this the next one i'm going to recommend is a new one the name of this is actually in korean on the back uh, but it's the pony effect powder foundation this is in the shade fair and this is probably a bit better color for me than 
the MAC one, although it leans a little bit on the warm side. So if I could just get something sort of in between the two, that would be great. This has that same super smooth buttery sort of texture and it also comes with a really amazing puffy sponge. This is like super plushy and fluffy and it just applies the powder so, so well. And the last one is by Stila and this was actually a recommendation from you guys. There was someone that said, try out the Stila powder foundation in the shade 10 watt. I think it'll work for you. This is a really beautiful formula. I'm surprised no one ever talks about this. However, the color 10 watt, while it is very fair, is probably the most yellow out of the three. So I don't reach for this one personally that often just because the color's not 100% right. If you're more warm toned, I would really recommend this. It's really beautiful. They also sell the compacts separately to the refills. So once you've actually bought the whole thing, you can just replace the refill pan, which I think is really great. My winner for the best powder foundation this year, I'm gonna give it to the Pony Effect one. And the reason being is that this is just such a great all round powder. The color fair is pretty good. I love the packaging. The the texture of it is really gorgeous. So that is my winner for this year. So I just wanted to show you swatches of the three powder foundations as well, just in case you're interested in a color reference. This is the MAC Studio Fix Powder in NW10. This is the Pony Effect Powder in Fair. And this is the Stila Powder in 10 Watt. And the final category for powders is best finishing powder. So these are powders that you use all over, even after you've used a setting powder, to kind of add some glow and radiance back to the skin, which can often happen when you're using a mattifying powder. I also sometimes use finishing powders to buff out all the rest of my cheek products. So it is literally the last powder step that I'll use. I'll do my bronzer, contour, blush, highlight, everything. And then I go in with a finishing powder and it kind of just like acts like a filter and that it diffuses all of the cheek products and that together so it looks seamless so you don't have like Neapolitan ice cream stripe on your cheek. <laughs> the first nomination for best finishing powder I have are my Guerlain Meteorites. This is such an oldie but a goodie. I've had this particular one for a few years but still smells good, still works well. <laughs> but as you can see they're like little pearls. This is a very bougie product. They do have a very light soft perfumey scent as a lot of luxury French brands do. So that might be quite off-putting if you've got quite sensitive skin. You might also love that it's scented because it feels bougie. <laughs> I also want to mention that I also have the flat compact. So this comes like in a little velvet pouch. This is what I use when I travel because it's basically the same product but pressed. I do prefer the way the loose ones look on my skin I think overall. I think it's a little bit harder to kind of get the product out of a compact but it's a really handy way to be able to travel with the product. The next one nomination for best finishing powder is by a brand that does finishing powders so well, Hourglass. So this is their diffused light powder. Everyone and their mum recommends dim light and that is such a beautiful powder but it's just too deep for my complexion. So if you are say NW20 and above, then I would totally check out Dim Light because that looks really stunning when it's used on the right complexion. But if you're as fair as me, then I would skip dim light and go straight to diffused lights. Even ethereal light is really beautiful as well. I used to own that. That's a bit more just sort of white and pearly, whereas this has a slight yellow tone to it. Yellowness doesn't really translate on the skin because it's such a sort of fine powder. You can kind of use this in a way like a setting powder. It's a little bit less glowy than the Guerlain. The Hourglass powders are definitely worth their money. They are some of the smoothest, most beautifully finely milled powders. And I mean, as you can see, I've absolutely loved this because I've totally hit pan. And then the last nomination for best finishing powder is technically not a finishing powder. It's actually a highlighter, but it's such a soft, subtle, satiny kind of highlighter, so finely milled, that when you use it with a big fluffy brush all over, you can totally use it like a finishing powder. And it's by Shan XO's brand, XO Beauty. This is their Radiant Glow Highlight Powder in Aurora. I mean, look at that pan. I have completely hit pan. I have a backup of my own downstairs. This is probably one of the most beautiful products of makeup that I own because of its versatility. I keep it with my powders because that's typically how I use it. But if you do build it up on the cheek and really buff it in, it's almost like the more you buff and the more you blend, the more it becomes like a highlight. And while I think it's beautiful as a highlighter, I think it's truly the most gorgeous finishing powder. It's got absolutely no glitter or chunky sparkly particles or anything. It's just a soft pearlescent sheen. It's kind of like the hourglass powders on crack. And for me, this one has to be the winner for this category. I think Shan did such a great job on these. 
So that concludes my best powders video. I hope you liked my recommendations. If there are any other products as well that you think I should try for next year, pop them into the comments below as well. I'd love to check them out. Remember, I'll have links for all of the merchandise and ways that you can donate in the description. Tomorrow, we're looking at bronzers slash contours. It's a double whammy. I hope you guys have a good evening and I'll see you then. Bye.